Good evening. My name is Calvin Samuel and I'm Methodist Minister for the towns of Rochford and Rayleigh in the County of Essex. Welcome to Covenant Community Online Evening Prayers for this, the first Tuesday of Pentecost. We may be dispersed and in lockdown, but we choose to come together in worship as a covenant community. Evening prayer tonight, as usual, are once again drawn from the Methodist worship book. And once again, you won't need a copy, but please do join me in the words of the liturgy when they either come upon your screen in yellow, or if you're working from audio, the words in the bold type. And welcome back to my dining room. The table as usual is set because I shall be breaking my 24 hour Tuesday fast uh, immediately following tonight's evening prayers. If you haven't yet joined me for a Tuesday fast, uh, please do put it in your diary for next week and we shall fast together. So let's quiet our hearts now as we prepare to come before the Lord in prayer. Be swift, O God, to save us. Come quickly, Lord, to help us. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. God has sent into our hearts the Spirit of his Son, crying, Abba, Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let's share in a prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess the blindness that is not even aware of sinning, the pride that dare not admit it is wrong, the selfishness that can see nothing but its own will, the righteousness that knows no fault, the callousness that has ceased to care, the defiance that does not regret its own sins, the evasion that always tries to make excuses, the coldness of heart that is too hardened to repent. God, we are sinners. Be merciful to us. Amen. In silence we bring more personal confessions before the Lord. To all who truly repent, this is God's gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. We say the prayer of the evening. God and Father of all, as this day ends, we offer up its hours in praise to you. As we take our rest, Unite us by your Spirit in praise of Christ our Lord, the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, in whom we make our prayer. Amen. Our psalm for tonight is Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. 
Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Amen. And our New Testament lesson for tonight comes from Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 6. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on, he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, when do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the mount of olives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We come now to our prayers of intercession. If you're watching this live on YouTube, I invite you to make use of the YouTube chat section to add your own prayers of intercession. If you're watching this uh, later on, the chat section is disabled, but you can leave some prayers in the comment section below. So let us pray. Blessed are you, eternal God, to be praised and glorified forever. Hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one that the world may believe. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that the life of Christ may be revealed in us. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. Give them courage to proclaim your gospel. Inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world, especially as we continue to navigate this global pandemic. 
guide them and all people in the way of justice and peace. Make us alive to the needs of our community. Help us to share each other's joys and burdens. Look with kindness on our homes and families in this time of social distancing. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. Inspire us to have compassion on those who suffer from sickness, grief or trouble. In your presence may they find their strength. We remember those who have died. We think especially of Keith Dan this week. Father, into your hands we commend them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. In silence, we bring more personal intercessions before the Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. We pray you to accept and answer our prayers, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, at the ending of this day and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness, that we may take our rest in peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will lie down in peace and take our rest, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. May the souls of the faithful through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Thank you so very much for joining me for evening prayers tonight and a particular thank you to those who were able to join me in fasting today. By the way, if you have been fasting, please do drop me a line, leave something in the comments to let me know how you are getting on. What's the Lord saying to you? Uh, how are you learning? What impact is uh, this repetition of fasting having on your prayer life? I'd love to hear and to know. And I continue to be persuaded that the more of us who are praying, uh, the more our world can be changed. And certainly as we navigate our way through this pandemic, we are in need of more and more prayer. If tonight has been helpful to you, please do like and share this video with your friends and family by whatever means uh, you need to do that. And invite them too to share it uh, and to like it. It helps with the YouTube algorithms if there are some likes on the videos and they are more easily found by others. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please, please do click on the subscribe button. It's a button just down there. And if you click on that bell, the notification buttons, that means that you'll be the first to hear of any new content on the site. I'll be here, of course, on Sunday. Uh, Sunday is the first Sunday within the season of Pentecost, and we'll be continuing uh, to think about what it means to be filled with the Spirit uh, and what it means uh, to live as a Christian a life uh, in the Spirit. 
please do join me for that on Sunday. Uh, but before that, tomorrow evening at 7, I'll be leading the Worship Academy within my local circuit here, the South End and Lee Methodist Circuit. I'll be exploring uh, the theme, Holiness as Distinctly Christocentric, and it's really a chapter from my book on holiness, More Distinct, Reclaiming Holiness for Today. If you're able to join me for that, uh, it will be on the channel from 7 p.m. tomorrow. If you are part of the local circuit, we're also inviting you to join a Zoom conversation so that having listened to the lecture, we can then uh, explore that. If you do want to be part of that Zoom conversation, uh, do get in touch either with me or with our circuit administrator and we'd love to uh, have you as part of that conversation. So I'll see some of you tomorrow evening at 7 for Worship Academy and then I'll see the rest of you next week, Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Bridget Summer Time for our Sunday celebration. God bless you.